Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Is UK agriculture better off in or out of Europe? And Group asks US to examine pesticide-coated apples banned by Europe. Lithuania's 2015 euro bid on track as EU budget criteria met. Party election broadcast on 30th of April 2014. Plus, David Cameron gives a cast iron guarantee over EU referendum. It's Tuesday, 13th of May. So glad you're here with us. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Is UK agriculture better off in or out of Europe? Farmers would be reckless and naive to think current farm support levels would continue if the UK left the European Union, according to a leading M uh, Conservative MEP. Richard Ashworth was responding to claims made by UKIP MEP Stuart Agnew that farmers would be better outside the EU during a feisty European elections hustings event in London on Wednesday evening. Mr Agnew, a Norfolk farmer himself, fought a lone battle on the issue of EU membership as politicians from four other UK political parties all made the case for staying in Europe, albeit while pursuing reform of its flawed institutions. Mr Agnew announced himself at the NFU organised event which took place at the Farmers Club by declaring the party is over as far as UK farming relationships with the EU is concerned. While admitting Europe provided a bonanza for UK farmers in the decade up to 1984, he said that bad has increasingly outweighed the good since. He made repeated reference throughout the evening to how Europe has strangled British agriculture through regulation, citing the neonicotinoid ban, the inability to grow GM crops, and a raft of legislation imposed on pig and poultry producers. Now, if you work for the European Commission, he said, your one job is to make rules. It is a job for life. The only way to get sacked is if you're a whistleblower. While the other candidates for the May 22nd European Parliament elections argued that UK farmers needed to be part of the single EU trading bloc, Mr Agnew said if it left the Union, the UK could forge its own trading relationships, for example with Japan. You don't have to be in a political union to trade with it. If we were to leave the EU, we would still be members of the World Trade Organization, he said. Group asks US to examine pesticide-coated apples banned by Europe. US-grown apples are widely coated with a pesticide that has been newly banned in the European Union amid health concerns, and the United States is at least a year behind in a required scientific assessment of the pesticide, an environmental group said on Thursday. The Environmental Working Group, a non-profit health and environmental advocacy group, sent a letter to the Environmental Protection Agency asking for the agency to halt the use of DPA. Until a new analysis shows DPA levels on food are safe, the group said. DPA, which is sprayed on apples after they are harvested to help prevent browning, was first registered as a pesticide in the United States in 1947, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. But recent concerns about the pesticide's potential links to cancer led the European Union to ban fruits containing more than 0.1 part per million of DPA, and these regulations took effect in March. Lithuania's 2015 euro bid is on track as EU budget criteria met. Lithuania pushed ahead with plans to adopt the euro next year as the European Union Statistics Office confirmed that the Baltic nation's debt and deficit levels are in line with the bloc's targets. The Lithuanian government brought its deficit below the euro adoption limit, 3% of gross domestic product, to 2.2% last year, from 3.2% in 2012. Eurostat in Luxembourg said today in a statement, state debt fell from 39.4% and GDP from 40.5%. Euro aspirants' debt must be less than 60% of GDP. 
So, Lithuania expects final EU approval in July to become the 19th Euro nation in January 2015. It would be the last of the three former Soviet Baltic republics to make the switch after Estonia adopted the currency in 2011 and Latvia joined this year. Party election broadcast on 30th of April 2014. In our letters section, JC Whiffen writes, The deficit has been cut by a third, but you do not tell electors that you are still spending about 120,000 million more than you receive each year, and that, therefore, the national debt has risen during this parliament by about 400,000 millions. You make no mention of how or when you prepare to change this to a surplus, or how you will repay that enormous debt. You give a false impression. My letters to the Chancellor have failed to extract an answer, too. Real change in Europe and standing up for Britain because your party has less than 10% of the votes in the European Union Parliament. You cannot deliver real change in Europe, whatever that might mean. Only one commissioner holding 4% of the votes on the Commission provides the same impossibility. What you say is not possible and gives a false impression, yet you expect to be trusted by the electorate. You will not be able to repatriate powers. As I have written to tell you in other letters, there is a concept in the EU called acquis communautaire. Have you still not read about it? EU budget increase. Was it not the case that there was not an increase rather than the budget was cut? Unaffordable spending at home. If you are borrowing at all, with no clear means of repayment and no timetable for attempting to do so, all of that spending is unaffordable, surely? You do not admit this. Keeping control of our borders. What you say suggests that the UK has now got control of its borders. But it doesn't, and cannot have as long as membership of the EU continues. You have not given the electorate authority for any immigration, yet you continue to allow it. Stopping ever closer union. Clearly you have still not read or understood the Treaty of Lisbon and continue to raise false hopes. You spoke at the end of the broadcast to tell viewers that you were renegotiating Britain's relationship with the EU. You appear still not to understand the significance of the Treaty of Lisbon and thus continue to mislead potential electors. Why? We, the electorate, have the right to have a say on Europe. You told us. You do not admit that ceding of sovereignty is unconstitutional, as therefore is your party's support for membership of the EU, or that the electorate has never approved membership of that organisation. Well, just an absolutely brilliant letter, so well put together and articulated with solid supporting facts. Well done, JC, and thank you for sharing that with us. Please do keep your letters coming in to us. David Cameron gives cast iron guarantee over EU referendum. On the finer points of Big Dave's feckless promises, this article really made me smile. David Cameron has given a cast iron guarantee that he will not stand as Prime Minister unless he can secure a referendum on the European Union in 2017. In a red line for future coalition negotiations, Mr Cameron said that the public must have their say on Britain's membership of the European Union. As voters prepare to go to the polls for the European parliamentary elections later this month, the Conservative leader said he was confident he could renegotiate the UK's relationship with Brussels. Mr Cameron made a similar cast-iron guarantee that he would hold a referendum on the Lisbon Treaty in 2006, but subsequently dropped his commitment in the run-up to the election. Asked if he would offer a cast-iron guarantee on a referendum, Mr Cameron said, Absolutely. We will hold that referendum by the end of 2017. It will be a referendum on an in-out basis. <laughs> well, forgive me for grinning, but is this guy living on the same planet as the rest of us? What folly! Having demonstrated only five years ago that Big Cheese Dave's idea of cast iron was very different, indeed, to the fabulous rigid material Mr Brunel used to build resilient infrastructure that is still in service today in the UK. This crazy fool expects the electorate to fall for exactly the same trick. Well, well, what a low level of astuteness Mr Cameron credits the UK electorate with.
something of an insult. Now, we have got a real treat for you in today's video library. As the mainstream media via the politics show sets itself up to play political chicanery with UK Independence Party leader Nigel Farage, and when it comes to filibuster, it doesn't get much better than this. But it's rare to see the filibustering coming from the interviewer. In this episode of The Politics Show, Andrew Neil sets about trying to bait Nigel Farage off the topic of EU elections. Oh, we have to give a hat tip to Mr Farage for straightening out Mr Neil with the kind of prowess and deliberate posture that even Mrs Thatcher would have been proud of. Of course, what this demonstrates is the frustration of the media and political elite because the genie is out of the bottle. As you can read in our 1972 et al. section, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 301048 makes it clear that there is an obligation on Her Majesty's government and all political parties to hide the truth about the EU from the people. Well, the timing of the AstraZeneca stroke Pfizer deal couldn't be more perfect, and it's a pleasure to watch Nigel Farage as he drags Andrew Neil firmly back onto the real topic at hand. Who gets to govern Britain? Brussels or Westminster? No. Now, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.